Hello, in this video, I would like to talk about some steps the United States is on the verge of implementing to combat the climate crisis. Now, in the recent infrastructure bill, there is nearly $8.6 billion set aside for carbon capture. Now, carbon capture is the process of taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and pumping it underground into rock formations, thus effectively eliminating some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, this is a good idea. Its practicality has really yet to be tested on large scales. So, it may or may not work, but it is arguably a very American attempt at solving the climate crisis. There are a few ways of reducing our atmospheric CO2. One of the ways is to change our behavior. This is reflective in the push to have half of the vehicles sold by 2030 being electric vehicles. I'm also skeptical of this because I don't think American attitudes have shifted enough to produce this outcome. However, the other way of reducing our atmospheric CO2 is by literally actively taking, a, taking it out of the atmosphere. Now, the American approach, the carbon filtering, as I'll put it, is a way of artificially affecting the closed system that is the atmospheric CO2 problem. Generally, the reason that CO2 levels is such a problem is because there is really no way for the CO2 to effectively leave this closed system up until now where we are going to try this carbon sequestration approach. Now, currently, the idea is, at least in the infrastructure bill, to develop a pipeline to carry the CO2 down into rock formations. This, if successful, would show and really be the first tangible result of our ability to essentially hack the planet, to geoengineer our way out of the climate crisis. Now, 
another important aspect of the carbon capture part of the infrastructure bill is the bill's desire to give grant money to private companies that are in the carbon capture industry. Being that carbon capture is such a relatively new technology, there is great risk for private companies to embark on this endeavor. There is no way of knowing whether their labors will ever pay off. So it is incumbent upon the government to take the financial risk and give these private companies grant money in the hopes that that investment will pay off. I would actually favor a different approach. Although I think it is important to get the private industry up to speed on carbon capture, I think the most effective way to try to geoengineer our way out of the climate crisis is to either have the military develop the technology, as I discussed in a previous video, or develop a whole new governmental agency which is dedicated to working on geoengineered solutions to the climate crisis. This would be similar to a NASA type organization in that when the United States faced a threat or perceived threat from the Soviet Union and space exploration and realized that we were far behind in that race. The United States created NASA as a way of energizing our efforts to beat the Soviet Union in our space exploration efforts. If we want to seriously combat the climate crisis, we need to take steps as seriously as we did when we faced the Soviet Union and space exploration. Also, if we want to take this a step further, we can look at the foundings of the Manhattan Project. Now, the Manhattan Project was tasked with developing the nuclear bomb, which essentially won World War II for the Americans and the Soviet front or Russian front. If we want to battle the climate crisis effectively, we must seriously look at developing organizations whose sole focus is similar to the sole focus of NASA at the time and the Manhattan Project at the time. We must seriously understand that it is unlikely 
that Americans are willing and capable enough to change our consumer behavior in the way of accepting electric vehicles or other things. However fantastical carbon capture may be, it seems to me that that is America's best hope at significantly reducing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and playing our relatively large part in solving the climate crisis. Now, recently, the International Climate Report just came out, which essentially said that the only way to avert a climate crisis is to significantly reduce carbon emissions worldwide. And I believe the recently passed infrastructure bill does attempt to make great strides in this area. However, I would caution people in not thinking that the climate crisis is, for lack of a better term, avoidable. At this point, although it is nice to think we can avert the climate crisis, it is unlikely that the world will be willing and able enough to significantly reduce our consumer-like behaviors enough to make a substantial difference in the warming of the climate. It is possible. I just think it is unlikely. And I think for scientists to put terms in, such as the warming can be reduced if we take steps now, is kind of giving people false hopes. I think we can do our best to manage our behaviors and maybe create geoengineered solutions which may help in alleviating, alleviating the climate crisis. But I think that society as a whole should come to terms that our climate will be, at least in the near term, damaged almost beyond repair by our own actions. If we would like to take this seriously, we can see that our actions as a human species has caused for the first time in human history wildfire smoke to be present in the North Pole attributed by Siberian wildfires. So, I would just caution people 
in their hopes mm -hmm. that humanity is at a stage where we can effectively, artificially control our climate. I think we are at the baby steps, stages of doing so. And I think the future warming that is to take place is kind of inevitable at this point. I think that we should, in a sense, accept our fate and work towards creating a somewhat better future for not this generation or the next, but for several generations to come in the future.